Hi everyone, welcome back to World Literature. Today we're going to be talking about Lu Shun, a modernist Chinese writer who's considered the father of the short story form in China. Now I want to note that we're jumping ahead quite a bit from Voltaire and um, we're jumping all the way to the early 20th century and you know, some of this is made more um, kind of exaggerated, the leap I mean, by the fact that we don't get to do Tagore. So I encourage you to go back and look at that Tagore poem which we would have spent quite a bit of time talking about considering that Tagore was the first non-European winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. Um, nevertheless, we are jumping ahead into the 20th century with Lucian, and I've cut one of the readings from his short story collection, and instead just am going to emphasize A Madman's Diary for today. Now, Lucian was born in 1881, and he died in 1936, and he lived during a time of great reform in China. He was part of something called the New Culture Movement, and I'm going to post some notes about Lushan and this movement and this story in particular on Blackboard, but for now I'll just tell you what the notes more or less say. So the New Culture Movement emerges in the 1910s and 1920s, also called the Doubting Antiquity Movement, and without getting too much into it, it was very much a progressive movement to kind of modernize China, a call for more democratic reforms, critique of traditional values associated with Confucianism and patriarchal family structures, a critique of feudalism, which was still the primary economic and social means of organizing society in China at that time. It was also a movement that was very much pro-science, um, like I said, pro-democracy, but also it had a kind of populist streak, by which I mean wanting to really emphasize everyday life, you know, average people. And in literature, that took the form of emphasizing vernacular writing rather than classical Chinese. So by that, I mean people began, authors began writing the way that people speak. And Lu Shun was really instrumental in the way that he um, put forward a popular vernacular style of writing in the short story form. Like I said before, he's considered one of the founding fathers of modernism, and I think in this story we see that both in the form and the content of the story. More so in the content for us as readers who are approaching the text in English translation, but if you were to read it in the original language, you would also perhaps be more attuned to the modernist elements of the form as it, they kind of play out with the use of vernacular. But I'm going to say more about that as we continue. This story is inspired by a Russian writer's story. Nikolai Gogol wrote a short story called Diary of a Madman, and the story was published in 1835. The stories are different, but they have similar themes. Uh, I guess you could characterize them as both being about a madman who is perhaps the only sane one in society. So raising these questions of, you know, in a society that has gone mad, is the madman sane or, you know, sane people really mad? Um, this kind of relativizing of madness itself is something that he takes from Gogol. So we already see this kind of cross-pollination, this expression of world literature in um, Lu Shen's story itself. Okay, so the story begins in an ordinary village. We're told in the kind of frame story by the narrator that he's gone back to his hometown and he meets the brother of the madman. Now that story that we get at the beginning, the frame story, which sets everything up for us, is actually taking place at a different time than the rest of the text, right? That frame story is taking place after all of the events that the diary is going to, the diary is going to um, account for. So the frame story tells us that everything has been resolved, the madman has recovered, and importantly, he's gone off to take a, a formal post. So let's look at this. His brother says on the very first page, I appreciate your coming such a long way to see us, he said, but he recovered some time ago and has gone elsewhere to take up an official post. Official post meaning something that, you know, it's perhaps involved with the government, bureaucracy in some way, not just a job, right, but an official post in the society. So in a way, we begin with a sense of relief. Before we even get into the story of the madman's ordeals, we know that he has recovered. This should kind of alleviate our stress and anxiety. Of course, by the time we get to the end of the story, it does just the opposite. But that aspect of the setup is important for us. 
Something that you should also know about the setup of the text is that frame story is written in classical Chinese. So if you were reading it in the original, the style at the beginning would be very different from the diary. The diary itself is written in a more vernacular, modern style of Chinese. So the way that the madman is writing is more modern, vernacular, progressive, with the times, than the story in the beginning, which is supposed to be a time that is contemporaneous with us as the reader, but is actually written in this archaic, old-fashioned form. So what does that mean? How do we interpret this choice to put them in these two different styles of writing? Well, some have suggested that by putting the frame story in this archaic, old-fashioned style of writing, we are meant to be critical of it, that the recovery is actually a regression of some kind, whereas the madness is actually a progressive, enlightened way of being. That's something that we miss as a host culture because we don't get to see that in translation, but it's something that would absolutely be there in the original. Cannibalism. <laughs> Here we are once again with cannibalism. I think we need to read this metaphorically. It's true that cannibalism was practiced in China, and in ancient times, especially ritualistically. There are also stories of people being desperate and engaging in acts of cannibalism. But the primary way that cannibalism is functioning in this story is as a metaphor, right? Now, a metaphor for what? I think as readers in our own time, we could read it as a metaphor for our own society, for capitalist society perhaps, for a society that is ruthless, right, that is unforgiving. Dog eat dog is a way that we would sometimes put it. So there is a kind of um, way that we destroy and eat each other in our own society, on a metaphorical level, I hope. At Lucien's time, in his time of writing, he was primarily critiquing the feudalistic structures of society that were similarly, perhaps more so, um, destructive to social being and social well-being. So people, you know, really, um, again, living in this kind of dog-eat-dog -dog way. He also is critiquing a certain aspects of Confucianism, which were you know, it's just a philosophy that is very embedded in traditional Chinese culture, and certain elements of it include things like filial piety, which is respect and, um, in some ways, almost worship of one's ancestors and elder family members, parents, etc., a kind of looking towards the past rather than the future. So we can already start to see the cannibalism motif as being a metaphor also for kind of a society that doesn't, um, that just kind of devours itself and doesn't move ahead. So we need to think about it on all of these levels, both how we interpret it for our host culture and how Lucien would have intended it at the time. The story is very short. The story is primarily his diary and the way that he descends further and further into madness, right? Um, he, he begins to realize that everyone around him is a cannibal, and everyone thinks this is okay except him. When the doctor comes to him, he thinks he's being looked at to you know, be fattened up, to be fed to others. So we get a kind of thorough descent into his paranoia, if you will. He tries to find a way out by um, reading ancient texts, works of philosophy, but he sees between the lines and again and again this, this insistence of, quote, eating people, again, that we need to read metaphorically. 